Morning. Today we're going to be covering how to make a bee feeder just out of simple materials like a jar and a drill. So the reasons why you need to feed your bees is if you think they might starve. Now starving bees isn't a pretty thing. I've never seen it. We have, we're blessed with an area that has a lot of flowers throughout the year. However, you hear reports of bees dying with their heads down the cells and simply because they didn't have enough food to last the winter or the time without flowers. So if you think your bees are not going to have enough food to last, which is honey stores, then feeding them is a good idea. So there's lots of different ways to feed them. You can use jars, you can, you can use um, various under the lid feeders, and there's also entrance feeders, frame feeders, syrup feeders, dry sugar feeders. So today we're just going to cover how to make a simple jar feeder and uh, two other types of feeders you can simply make to put under the lid to get your bees out of trouble. Now, why you'd need to feed your bees is to build up those stores for winter. If, you, if you've left it too late, it's actually hard to get your bees to take feed during the really cold months if you live in a cold climate. Now, so what you'll need to do if it is coming up to your winter, then you'll need to feed them in the autumn in order to build up the stores if they don't have enough to last. And the information of, of how much they need, how, how much honey they need in their, in their hive to last the, the winter is best, is, is best uh, gotten from your local beekeepers. So ask your bee club, ask your local beekeepers and find out how much stores your hive needs to last the winter. Now, in the really cold climates, people say you need two boxes full of honey for the hive to last the winter otherwise they might starve. For the um, sort of intermediate regions that get a cold winter, still snow, um, some people say half a box of honey is enough to last the winter. In our area we don't need to, we actually get a good honey flow all winter so we don't need to leave stores for them in that way and that's because we're in a subtropical region. If you've got any questions put them in the comments below and also if you have a method that you like to feed your bees, put it in the comments below. Let us know what type of method you use and also if you're mixing a sugar syrup, what the ratio is because there's, um, there's different ratios depending on what you're trying to achieve, which I might cover now. So typically, people will feed in the, in the autumn or fall, they will feed a thicker sugar syrup so it's easier for the bees to store it in the frames. Now that'll be two parts dry sugar to, to one part water. So, and the way to do it is you, you get your sugar, um, get a hot pot of water and stir your sugar in, take it off the heat source unless you're really having trouble dissolving it. Reason being is you don't want to caramelise that sugar. Once the sugar caramelises, it becomes a bit toxic for the bees. So be careful not to caramelise your sugar. Then once you've got your, your syrup solution, I might just add that the ratio for the spring time is generally a one to one ratio. And that is for the purposes of getting a jump on the season, giving them a kind of nectar substitute which stimulates the bees to go ahead and start start raising their young which means by the time the flowers come out you've already got a population that's ahead of the curve so that's the other reason people feed so one is stores for winter and the other is to stimulate activity in the brood nest prior to a flow any questions put them in the comments below for those that are just tuning in we're covering how to make a simple bee feeder using a jar and a drill and I'll also cover a couple of other methods that you can put under the lid if you need to feed your bees. So the jar feeder. First of all, if you've got uh, our flow hive like this, you'll notice there's a hole in the inner cover. Now, that hole there is designed to take a feeder. You can actually buy off the shelf feeders to, to mount under the lid. So 
in this case that will be where you'll be putting your jar. So we'll be simply putting holes in the lid of a jar and putting it over there with syrup in there and the bees can access the honey through those holes. So grab your plug to get an idea of the size. You'll need to make uh, the holes in the lid. Get yourself a marker and run around just to, to mark out the size of your plug there because you don't want to put holes out here the bees won't be able to access that and it'll just end up making a soggy inner cover then it's probably useful to put a chalk underneath so that you don't crack your lid and then just go around and drill holes Okay, so the size of drill bit is quite small. This is a 1.5 millimeter drill bit. So it's the smallest one in my box. And what's going to happen is the sugar syrup goes in here. Once you've got your, if you're in the fall, you'll be doing a, a two to one, two sugar, one part water. You've dissolved it all, fill up the jar, put the lid on like this. And then what happens is when you turn this jar over, creates an airlock, a little bit of uh, sugar syrup will dribble out at first but then it will stop and the bees can then suck the nectar through those holes. You'll come along to your hive, you'll take your roof off, take your plug out. Now if you're new to beekeeping, wear your veil or your bee suit. Bees tend to be more friendly here than they are at the entrance. The guard bees are hanging around down at the entrance. The bees up here are doing other jobs so they are usually more friendly in, in this um, area. So take the cap off and simply place the jar over the top of the hole. Make sure it lines up so that the bees can access those holes you've just drilled in the lid. And that's it. Now a hive that is quite strong will need, will be able to empty a jar like this in a week. If, if you don't have much honey stores, it's been a very poor season, then you might need to feed them multiple jars in order to get any stores building up in your frames. So you don't just want to leave it open like that. You'll need to put a spare box on top to cover up the jar. So I'm just going to put that on there now, like that. And that way the sun's not shining into the jar and you're also keeping the rain out once you've put your lid on top of your hive. So you can then come back and check in a week and see how much of that sugar they've emptied. You can also feed bees honey, but please don't feed them honey from another hive. Much preferable to feed sugar and the sugar you would use is white sugar. Don't feed bees raw sugar or brown sugar because it uh, can make them sick. So pure white sugar and water is the best. If you are going to feed them honey, make sure it's from their own hive and be sure that your hive doesn't have uh, disease issues. Another way to go is a, a smaller jar. If you don't have a spare box to put on top, then you can make a feeder using a smaller jar like this that can just go right under under your roof. So that's another option. If you're using a metal lid, a small nail and a hammer, that's also helpful if you haven't got a drill. You can just use a small nail and a hammer and punch a bunch of holes in the lid here. Same style. A small jar like this will be emptied very quickly so you'll need to be checking that every couple of days if you're, if you're only using a small jar. We've got some questions coming in. Sally is asking what is considered a cold climate. Um, where she is doesn't usually get frosts and she sees wild bees active throughout the year. Okay, if you've got forage active throughout the year, or your bees are foraging actively throughout the year, then it's pretty unlikely you'll need to feed them. And there are some cases where some beekeepers will feed them just to, just to give them a head start. 
but in, in areas where, where there's all year round flowers, then you generally don't need to feed. Good question. Um, is one super of honey enough to winter in a warm climate like Florida? Do I, or do I need to feed pollen patties through winter too? Okay, I'm not exactly sure in Florida. If, if anybody knows the answer to that, please put it in the comments below. Um, generally in the warmer climates, you, um, you don't need as much honey. Uh, I'll be guessing you might need half a box of honey for the bees to, to last the winter. Maggie has an interesting way that she does hers. Um, she's in Idaho, which gets really cold and uses a very fine granulated sugar on top of an inner liner in addition to the honey stores of two, brood, two deep broods um, and uses the sugar to absorb moisture within the hive. Okay, interesting. So, so she's talking about using a dry sugar feed. Now, generally the way that works is is you would, um, this box doesn't have the frames, but if the frames were in here, you'd be putting a mat on, on top of the frames, which could be in that, if there was another super full of frames, um, you could put a mat on top of that and pour dry sugar on it. Some people like to wet that sugar down, others don't. There's all sorts of things, like everything in beekeeping, there'll be um, three answers from every two beekeepers. So um, do your research and find out what might work for you. I do have another couple of under the lid feeders to show you. Oh, one thing about dry feeding is it works better if you've got a strong colony and when there's not much nectar around. Generally, if there's nectar around, the bees won't take the um, dry sugar. And also, if, if the colony is not very strong, they might not be able to collect enough water to process that dry sugar. So there's a couple of factors there. Um, in deciding whether to do dry or wet sugar feeding. Another, another way that is um, used by some beekeepers is you put your sugar syrup in a bag like this and you put it under the lid. You might have a couple of bags. You take that cap out so the bees can regularly uh, come up here and you simply put a few pinholes in the top of the bag Make sure they're not in the bottom of the bag or, or you'll get a very wet area here and it may drain out quicker than the bees can actually consume it. So holes go in the top here with, with, um, with a, a pin and the bees will come up and start sucking the sugar syrup out of the bag. So that's a very simple, quick one to make. There's another one which is a Tupperware container you can place under the um, like to like to do that however you must make sure the bees aren't going to drown they do easily drown in syrup and they can swim for a little while but uh, they need something they can climb out so you can throw in a bunch of pine needles like that and the bees can then have something to stand on while they suck the sugar and also a way to climb out so that's another method that does get used quite easy and quick to make so uh, there's also entrance feeders which plug on the entrance. I haven't used those. There's also frame feeders which are the full size frame. There's also beekeepers who pour dry sugar into empty uh, conventional combs that are drawn. So there's a multitude of different ways. The important thing is that if you think your bees are going to starve is to do something about it. Any more questions? Yeah, David's asking, how often and how much should I feed? Okay, as to how often and how much you should feed, now a jar like this, this is a two litre jar, a strong hive that is hungry and needs to build up stores for the winter, let's say it's been a poor season, you're in a, you're in a, uh, a cold climate, they haven't been able, they've eaten most of their stores, they haven't been able to get good stores for winter, then a jar like this they might consume in a week. You then need to keep topping up that jar and the idea would be to continually keep it topped up through the autumn to, to build up the stores. If you stop, start, stop, start by um, letting it go empty for a few weeks, what will happen? What you'll find is the bees will just consume what you've given them and won't actually build up any stores. So you won't get the effect that you're trying to achieve. Um, Adrian has just started beekeeping with two hives and is in California. 
Um, they didn't know that feeding bees honey from other hives is bad and they fed them one frame of honey over the week and put it outside the hive. What should they be looking for in terms of disease? Okay, there's a couple of things there. Now, um, feeding bees honey outside the hive is, is not a good idea because of robbing. So whenever you leave honey out, then bees will start to eat that from all the hives in the area and that not only can share pathogens from, from that honey, um, it also puts the bees into a robbing mode, which means they might decide to, to take advantage of weaker colonies and rob their honey rather than bother to go and get flowers because they get a, a real taste for nectar. So for that reason, in many areas, it's actually illegal to leave honey out in the open. In, and um, the reason why that policy is there is to limit the, the spread of diseases such as AFB. So, so um, the, the next thing is, yes, it's not a good idea to share honey between colonies if you can help it, but there is a myriad of reasons why a beekeeper will do that. For instance, if you are in a situation where a hive has gone queenless and you don't have the ability to, to buy a queen quickly, you might introduce a frame of brood that has eggs and larvae and a bit of honey on it from another hive. Or you might decide to introduce a honey frame from another hive. So in that case, you are sharing honey from another hive. So, so that's decisions as a beekeeper that you need to make whether, whether um, you, you are willing to do that. Now, having said that, if you've got the choice, then it's best not to. So if you are going to feed honey, then the idea is to only feed honey you've collected from that hive. There's a few ways to do that. One is if you have lots of honey on the shelf, you can use a feeder like this. Another way is if, if you've um, pulled out some frames, say in the springtime, maybe you've pulled out a few edge frames here to make some room in your brood nest. If you put them away in the freezer, you can then bring them out, let them warm up and introduce them back into your hive. And then you've got a full frame of honey for the bees to, to then consume. So a few different ways people use there. Any more questions? Yeah, Rufus has said, so if you say that you stop feeding them, they will just consume what they have stored. Why won't they be collecting nectar naturally from nature for storage? Absolutely, bees collect a lot of nectar. Um, and that the idea is they store that for, for the time ahead that doesn't have flowers. Now, your bees will do that until such times as there's no flowers in the area. Bees will forage a three to 10 kilometre radius, which is extraordinary. They might, a hive like this might visit 50 million flowers in a day, but when there's no flowers, they can't do that. And that's when they're surviving on the stores that they have. Sugar is their carbohydrate and, uh, and pollen is their protein source. And they, they need uh, both sugar and protein, both, both carbohydrate and protein to stay healthy. They consume about a frame of honey and a frame of pollen to raise one frame of brood. So that goes to show how much they need to eat in the springtime and in the summertime or, or here in the subtropical climate we also have flowers through the winter, they will, be, they will be bringing in nectar so there's no need to feed them. So the only reason you are feeding your bees is you realise that the stores are low and you want to build up stores for that time ahead when you think there's not going to be any flowers, typically in a long cold winter. The other reason is in springtime, if you want to get a jump on the season, some beekeepers will feed a a thinner sugar syrup, a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar to water, and that is said to stimulate the bees to start to start laying their eggs, raising their young, and that way you get a jump on the, on the season, and the bees can collect more honey while the flowers are out. More questions. Um, Benjamin is wondering how does he get bees in his hive? So. How you get bees in your hive, there's four main ways to start your colony. So once you've assembled your hive like this, then what you need to do is fill your 
brood box with some bees to then build from. So typically buying a nuke is the easiest way to go and we've got videos on, on how to install a nuke. Basically you take a what's called a nuke or nucleus which is five frames in a box with already have honey stores, brood, a laying queen and bees. So it's just a, a small hive and you can order that from a bee breeder. Get in your bee suit and introduce them into your colony with some starter frames that, um, that don't have, have um, any, any uh, wax on them yet and the bees will then draw those combs out and continue to build. Look after them, your bees will grow and when they're nice and busy in this bottom box, all the combs are drawn, you can add your top box. There are other ways, There's, you can buy a package in the mail, which is like an artificial swarm, which is say about 10,000 bees in a box. And, and you then, um, you can order that in the mail, shake them into your hive and away they start. Another way is catch a swarm. We've got lots of videos on that, which is in the, typically in the springtime, bees will often swarm. You'll find them around areas where there's lots of beehives hanging from, from trees six to 12 feet off the ground. And you can shake those bees into your box and start like that. Taking a split's another one. So let's say you've got a friend with a lot of bees. Uh, sometimes it could be helpful to take a split, which will limit their, um, the bees' choice to swarm because they've got work to do to keep filling those frames and basically you'll take some of your friends frames put them into your hive you can either let them raise an their own queen if they've got the resources to do so or you can introduce a queen from a bee breeder great question um, david is saying so is there a limit to how much to feed can there be too much and can that be detrimental to your bees in terms of health or creating lazy bees Okay, you won't create lazy bees. Bees will only really consume the feed if they're quite hungry. Otherwise, they'll still be out there foraging, doing what they love to do. So it, it is more of an emergency thing or it can be a routine thing if you're in an area that has a long, cold winter. Um, so there's no, no issues there. Feeding sugar, I guess, isn't nearly as good as collecting nectar from flowers. It's not what they're used to eating. However, if it's a choice between you or bees starving or surviving, then I would go ahead and feed them sugar syrup. Nick asks, when you talk about building up stores in the autumn season, are you leaving the honey over the winter months for the bees? And if so, when should be the last honey harvest? Okay. That will really depend on your area, so you may need to, to um, consult your local beekeepers as to how much you need to leave for the winter. In the really cold areas, you may need two boxes to survive the winter, two boxes of honey. In the sort of um, intermediate level areas that still get snow but don't have as long winter, uh, half a box might be enough for them to survive the winter. So it really depends. Ask your local beekeepers. Make sure you ask more than one. You'll get varied opinions and you'll need to, to make up your own mind. Um, if you're unsure, the flow frames do allow you to just harvest a little bit of honey and leave the rest for the bees. So some people choose to take the flow frames off the hive for the winter and others will, will leave them on. If you decide to leave your flow frames on, make sure you take the excluder out. Simple reason being, as the bee, bees cluster in their ball, which is typically in the middle of your brood box, once they've eaten any stores that are around this area, they'll move up into the next box to continue consuming stores. Now, if you've got your excluder in between these two boxes, the queen might be left behind because she can't get through that excluder and then she may perish of cold and you'll end up starting your spring with no queen. So. Um, Excluder must come out for winter if you've got a long, cold winter. Your choice whether you let the bees eat the honey out of the flow frames. If you are leaving the flow frames on with no excluder, come spring, you're going to need to, to shake the bees off the frames down into the bottom box and put your excluder back in place. Otherwise, some queens will lay brood in the flow frames. It's a bit queen specific. I've got um, 
a hybrid outside my door, no excluder, hasn't had one for years and she doesn't but other hives definitely will lay brood in the flow frames so you'll have to have to um, really look at that if you plan to leave the flow frames on with no excluder. Rick's in Western Sydney and has a garden with Melaleuca flowering now. Do you think he should feed? If, the, if there's lots of flowers around now, no. Your bees should be bringing in the forage. Unless your colony is really weak and there really isn't any honey stores and you're trying to give them the best chance. The, um, if you're by the coast in the Sydney area, you're probably going to get some, some good nectar flows during the winter as well. The Melaleuca here, you can see flowering down in the, in the swampy areas, it's a rain tree. So if you've had rain recently, those flowers will pop out. They'll pop out for a few weeks and then they'll disappear again. The, the local indigenous people here called it the, the rain tree for that reason. And we do get quite a bit of honey off it. However, it pulses, so you don't get it all at once. You, from anywhere from um, the end of summer through to midwinter, those melaleucas will or blossom when it rains. Um, there's just a little shout out here. Um, Jessica um, is a teacher at a school in Vermont and they have a flow hive there and she's saying thank you for sharing and inspiring the kids. Okay, fantastic. Flow hive in Vermont at the school. It's fantastic. There's a lot of schools taking up flow hives. They, um, they do have um, the advantage of being able to look into the, the windows and see what's going on in your honey super and the unique view at the back of the, the bees actually filling those cells so it's quite educational. A lot of families love the experience of harvesting the honey too. It's really quite different to conventional methods where, where at your school or home with your family you can really enjoy that process of the honey pouring out of the hive. Thanks um, for, for uh, the shout out. Mackenzie is asking, what about pollen patties? Okay, pollen patties is another thing that, that beekeepers will often feed. The, um, there's all sorts of, of mixtures with the idea being that bees need their, their carbohydrate source and their protein source. So beekeepers who recognise that their, their pollen stores are low and they really want to get their beehive nice and healthy will even move their hive to an area that is has uh, a good amount of pollen available or they'll feed pollen cakes or patties. So that's another thing to look into. Um, in terms of starvation, the sugar, the honey stores are the most important thing to get on top of. Um, Khan is living in a place where it has a long cold winter. What's the best way to protect the hive during those cold months? Okay, look, it, it does depend and there is varied opinions. So there's certainly opinions that say hives don't need a whole lot of insulation. The bees ball up in a ball and there's even situations that bees can survive without the box just hanging from a branch in the winter. My grandfather had one in his tree in Canberra that does get a long frosty winter with ice on your windscreen in the morning and the bees were there for years just hanging on a branch in his garden, no box at all. Um, so protecting them from the wind though will help. So you want your, your vented uh, cover at the back to be vents downward to limit the amount of airflow coming up through your screen bottom board and the tray in place. The, uh, but then there's another school of thought that says insulation is better and, and people will wrap their hives in blankets and so on in order to, to really insulate their hive and keep them warmer during the winter. There's other people in really cold climates that will actually move their bees indoors into some kind of warmer shed where they'll block them up. And there's others that say it's a mistake to keep them too warm because the bees go into a different mode when they're warmer and they'll consume more honey. So there's all sorts of thoughts around it. There's um, certainly beekeepers using hives like this in very cold areas, digging them out of the snow, and the bees are still fine as well. More questions? Um, Calvin says that his inner cover has an almost twinkie-shaped opening. What do you suggest he uses for a feeder? 
congrats, you've got one of our very earliest hives. So um, thank you for being one of our early supporters. We had a uh, inner cover with a, uh, an opening which is more oval shaped. So you can, um, you can still use that. All you'll need to do is make a, a surround here to give it a, a little bit of a lift or you can cut the oval shape, you mark out an oval shape here when you drill your holes. Or you can use the bag style feeder or, or this style feeder where the bees can um, just walk on top of the pine needles and suck the sugar syrup. So a few options for you. Um, in terms of uh, if, you've, if you've had that open and you've got a whole lot of comb in the roof, you might like to let the bees consume that first and before, before adding the feed or you'll need to um, use another box, move that um, roof full of comb up on top of another box like this and that way the bees, you'll have enough room then for your jar feeder underneath the lid if the honeycomb is built up under the lid. So there's a, a few different ways to, to go about feeding your bees. The important thing is to not let them starve. Ask your local beekeepers about how much you might need to have stored in the hive to last your coming winter or if you do plan to feed in spring then you can experiment with that with a one-to-one a -one ratio of sugar to water and a, a simple jar feeder like this or a small one like this if you just want to experiment a bit by putting that under the lid. Thank you very much for watching and tune in same time next week and we'll be covering something interesting to um, help you get started in beekeeping. So thank you again and see you next week.